Hey folks, this is JR with DIY Prepper. Welcome to the channel. As preppers, we put a lot of effort into things like food storage, survival gear, and defense. But with everything that could go wrong during a disaster, it's always a good idea to go beyond just the basics. So today we're going to talk about preps that a lot of preppers forget about. And one thing that a lot of preppers overlook is wagons and carts. If we find ourselves in a situation where we no longer have access to vehicles, you don't want to have to move everything by hand. Maybe you need to go down to a pond to gather water, or maybe just move things from one end of your property to the other. And when it comes to wagons and carts, you have several different options. Heavy-duty utility carts like this can be used around your house or yard. I used those a lot when I was a band director to move different kinds of heavy equipment, and it definitely beat trying to do all of that by hand. They can handle a ton of weight, and they also tend to have beefier tires, so that means that they can go over some pretty rough terrain. But even smaller carts and wagons can be useful, including things like this Radio Flyer wagon. The one that I just showed is the same one that my siblings and I played with at our grandparents' house, and even though it's not as beefy as a dedicated utility cart, it can still carry quite a bit over smoother terrain. You could also upgrade wagons like this with beefier tires to make it more comparable to an actual utility cart. Wheelbarrows are another option, although I would recommend getting one with two front wheels since those are more stable. You're going to be a lot less likely to dump stuff out if you get tired. Then folding carts can work okay for lighter duty work. The next thing that preppers forget is bicycles. In addition to helping you get in better shape, they can also help you travel longer distances easier than doing it on foot and at a much faster pace. Bicycles can be customized with things like saddlebags to help you carry small pieces of survival gear, and you can even hook them up to a trailer to carry larger things like your bug out bag. Mountain bikes can handle all sorts of terrain ranging from the open road all the way to wilderness trails. Their smaller size allows them to travel in areas that larger vehicles can't, and even if you do reach a point where you cannot use that bicycle to travel, you may be able to carry it through that area and then hop back on once you reach the other side. But if you're going to rely on bicycles, you do want to keep some spare parts like inner tubes on hand, along with the tools that you'll need to make repairs. And that brings me to the next thing that a lot of preppers forget to pick up, which is spare parts and other things that you need to maintain your gear and equipment. But before we do that, I'd like to thank the sponsor of today's video, Delete Me. In today's world, protecting your privacy and OPSEC is a huge challenge because of information that's available about us online. All it takes is a few minutes on a search engine to find out where somebody lives, who they're married to, how many kids that they have, and much more. Data brokers store this information and make it available to pretty much anyone willing to pay for it. Criminals, stalkers, and just general weirdos can use this information to harass you, steal your identity, or do phishing scams on your loved ones. For example, somebody tried to con my grandmother by telling her that one of my cousins was in jail somewhere in Europe and they wanted her to give them money to get him out. They were able to find out who she was and then also what my cousin did for a living based off of information they found online. However, you do have the right and the ability to protect your information. Delete Me will reach out to the different data broker websites and request to have your information removed. After my first report, which was issued a few days after I started using them, they had already removed my information from 26 locations with 60 more in progress. A lot of the things that they removed were from websites I hadn't even heard of before, so they're very thorough. If you want to check them out, then be sure to use this link and code to get 20% off. Now when it comes to maintenance items and spare parts, one of the easiest and least expensive things that you can pick up is different kinds of lubricants. I like to use mineral oil on my knives, it works well with protective coating on blades, and it also keeps the pivots on my folding knives and multi-tools moving smoothly. It's also cheap and easy to find. You can get it in big box stores and pharmacies since it's used as a laxative. And the fact that it's food safe is another thing that I like about it. You could use it as a protective coating on knives that you'd use for food prep. Just wipe it off and any residual that remains probably won't be enough to trigger a laxative effect. Here I have some hoppies for general cleaning of the pew pews and some CLP for lubrication. Then of course you also want to have oil for equipment like generators, vehicles, or anything else mechanical. Then for spare parts, think of the things that are most likely to either get lost or wear out. 
Screws and washers can loosen with use, or you could lose them while doing repairs or basic maintenance. And air filters, O-rings, gaskets, and springs will all wear out over time. Part kits work well for smaller things since you never know what you're going to lose, but it's a good idea to have a stockpile of specialty parts for things that may be harder to come by. General repair supplies like zip ties, super glue, and epoxy are always good to have for makeshift repairs, and then you should also have things like nails, screws, and even some lumber and plywood for making quick repairs around your house. Then tarps and plastic sheeting can be used to make temporary repairs to roofs and broken windows. Another important replacement part that a lot of preppers forget to pick up is additional cartridges and elements for their water filters. Berkey, Grail, and others use these, and without them, those filters are virtually worthless. If you own a Berkey filter like I do, you've seen firsthand how important it is to have replacements. Last year, the EPA reclassified their black Berkey filtering elements as pesticides because they have silver in them and that resulted in them not being able to sell those filters. Now, I don't really know where all that stands right now because I've seen them for sale from time to time, I believe on actual Berkey websites, and they have come out with replacements like the Stericil filtering elements. But the bottom line is you don't want to invest a bunch of money in some sort of water purification system only to run out of filters and not be able to use it. Then Grail filters have a very short service life compared to others, so be sure to have extra cartridges and also consider using a pre-filter to help them last longer. But if you're relying on a filter, you also need to understand that you may find yourself in a situation where those wear out or you can't use them for one reason or another. So even if you have a filter, you should also have a way to boil water and also know how to make activated charcoal. City Prepping did a video on that a while back, so you may want to check that out if you haven't done so already. Then another important prep that a lot of folks overlook is spare glasses. If you're someone who needs some sort of vision correction, the last thing that you want during a disaster is to lose your contacts or have your only pair of glasses get broken. You'd basically be as vulnerable as a gazelle with a broken leg. Although I haven't used them personally, I have heard good things about some of the online discount glasses stores. While they may not be as nice as your current pair, they'd at least give you something that you can use. And then you could also use them to pick up maybe some prescription safety glasses that you can use during building projects or while shooting. And if you wear contacts, it's always a good idea to keep a spare set of glasses nearby. You never know when you may sneeze and launch one into the next county, or they may just start to get on your nerves. Like right now, I'm only wearing my contacts on filming days because of my allergies. But if you prefer to use contacts, be sure to have a buffer supply on hand in case you can't order some for a little while. Then another important prep that a lot of preppers forget is footwear. I personally have been very guilty of having one pair of multi-use shoes that I use for everything. I use my Merrells that I'm wearing right now at home. I use them at church. I've also used them hiking, so I tend to wear my shoes out pretty quick. But the problem with that is that if your shoes are already on their last leg and something goes down, then you're going to have to make do with what you have, even if your big toe's poking out the front of it. Picking up a good pair of boots and keeping them in decent shape will ensure that you always have sturdy footwear that you could use working around the house for hiking or hunting and during a disaster. It's also a good idea to have special cold weather footwear to use during the winter months and something waterproof if you have to get out in the rain. And that brings me to the next thing that a lot of preppers overlook, which is rain gear, and there's a lot of different options for this. I have this military-style poncho that I keep in my backpack. In addition to being there to keep me dry, it can also act as a temporary shelter if I needed to use it for that. But you could get other things like rain suits. They'll probably actually do a better job keeping your body dry, but they're not going to be as multi-purpose as a poncho. So if you have the money, it wouldn't hurt to get both. Then, some other clothing items preppers tend to forget is socks and underwear, and while these aren't the most glamorous or cool preps, they're probably some of the most important. A good pair of wool socks can go a long way towards keeping your feet warm, but you do want to be able to change them out regularly. While you may be able to get away with wearing the same pair of jeans a few days in a row, you don't want to try that with socks and definitely not with underwear. Those two areas of your body generate a lot of sweat and since they're underneath other layers of clothing, they don't breathe very well. 
That's why they're more likely to get fungal infections, like jock itch or athlete's foot. But if you're able to change out your socks and underwear regularly, and also maybe do a daily wipe down, you're a lot less likely to get those kinds of infections. The next thing that a lot of preppers overlook is entertainment. I'm sure that most of us remember being bored out of our minds during the spring of 2020. It got so bad for some people that they resorted to watching Tiger King. But if we're dealing with a long-term situation or even just get snowed in, we may lose power and the internet will go with it, meaning that you're not going to be able to stream tacky docu-series or watch YouTube videos. And if that were to happen, you're going to need other ways to keep your mind occupied if you want to stay sane. Different kinds of books, both fiction and nonfiction, cards, board games, activity books, and other things can help with this. If you have kids, staving off boredom becomes especially important because, as we all know, a bored kid will drive you absolutely crazy. So for those younger ones, be sure to keep a good stash of coloring books and crayons and other similar activities on hand. Then another thing you may want to do for the younger guys is have a toy set aside that you could give them during a bad storm or some other emergency. That'll help take their mind off of whatever's going on, which is always a good thing. And when it comes to activities, try to have a good mix of things that you can do individually and as a family. Because while you do want to have things that you can do together as a group, everybody's still going to need a healthy amount of solitude as well. The next thing that preppers tend to forget are books, specifically general reference materials. While many preppers do have things like the SAS Survival Guide and the Survival Medicine Handbook, it's important to have references for other topics as well. One thing I try to do is have books that cover different kinds of animals and insects that I may encounter where I live, and the Audubon Field Guides are excellent resources for this. In addition to covering wildlife, they also have other books over other things like weather and trees, and all their field guides have color photographs that serve as excellent points of reference. Maps are another good thing to pick up, and those include detailed local maps of your state or region, along with larger road atlases that show the entire country. Those are nice if you're traveling and something goes down and you don't have a map for the particular location that you're in. Gardening books are also good to have, along with those that cover home repair and construction, and even an encyclopedia set could be useful. The Foxfire series, while not technically an encyclopedia, has several books that cover topics preppers may find useful. It includes how to do things like raise animals, how to build a log cabin, and other information that could be useful if we were to lose access to modern technology. Then another thing that preppers forget to do is develop skills. We get so busy trying to buy gear and supplies to solve our problems that many times we forget to prepare ourselves for the things that we may face. These can include the obvious, like fire starting, shelter building, and emergency water collection methods. If you have a solar generator and haven't tried to recharge it using solar panels, that's another thing to work on. Then, you could also develop specialty skills that you could use as a way to barter during a long-term situation. Blacksmithing is a good example of this, but of course there are others as well. So if you'd like to see more skills that you could use for bartering, then click here. Or if you want to see other things that preppers forget to stockpile, then click here. Once again, I'd like to thank Delete Me for sponsoring today's video. Thank y'all for stopping by. Y'all have a good one.